In fourth spot, I've got my surprise packet this year, Carlton. This is their this is their time. There's always a surprise packet this year, and I did say last year that I was going to stop predicting these things because they blow up in my face so consistently. But Carlton, I think there's a lot of good solid logic as to why I think they could be a potential powerhouse in the years to come. Their tall timber is arguably the best in the league. Mackay and Kerno as a forward duo is absolutely unreal. you got Weedering down the other end as well. On top of that, a midfield starring Patrick Cripps, who's just won the Brownlow medal. Sam Walsh, we know how good he is. And then supported by Chera, Hewitt, and now Blake Akers. There's consolidated depth now. Carlton went 8-2 and two last year, and it all kind of derailed a little bit after that. But to be honest, I'm choosing to look at that more optimistically because of the trajectory that I think they're on talent-wise. And I think it's a sign of the future. It may not be this year. I might be going early crow, but... Carlton top four is my bold call. All right, so the clip that you just watched is a clip from my ladder predictions at the start of the year where I made the bold claim that Carlton was going to shoot up the ladder this year and finish in the top four. Now, I know what you're thinking. I'm only clipping that up because I so often make terrible ladder predictions that when I finally have one that's starting to look pretty good, I'm clutching at it with everything I've got. And to be honest, yes. That is kind of what I'm doing. But to be completely honest with you, um, by the same token, middle of this year, maybe seven, eight weeks ago, I did a power rankings video where I had Carlton as the third or fourth worst side of the competition. So as much as I can be smug about my preseason prediction, Carlton's, you know, despite their really good start to the season, their mid-season form for that nine game stretch in the middle of this year was very, very uninspiring to the extent that I had completely gone backwards on them. You know, at the start of the year, they started with three wins and a draw. They beat the Cats at the MCG. That was an absolute thriller. So much so that at uh, round four, that point of the season, on the 8th of April, as I read from an article, they were $1.30 to make the finals this year. Between rounds eight and 13, they lost six in a row, and their odds of making the finals then went to an absolute high of $19. Can you believe that? And now, as I sit here making this video, I'm talking about them as one of the absolute red hot teams of the competition right now. And it's really hard to envisage a scenario where Carlton don't make the top six, let alone the top eight. It's been a bizarre topsy-turvy year for Carlton this year, where their best has looked scintillating and particularly a lot of their, in fact, all of their best form has come in the last six weeks. So most recently, they just knocked off the premiership favorite in Collingwood, which is a big rivalry game, a huge statement that they are actually a legitimate side. A couple of weeks before that, they demolished Port Adelaide by 50 points, another genuine premiership contender this year. They went to Perth and annihilated Fremantle by 53 points on their home deck, which at the time just looked like Fremantle didn't show up to that game. But when you look at it holistically, contextually, Carlton might just be a shit hot team right now. It's been a stat that's been thrown around, including by myself on this channel, that they were only the third team in history to win five games in a row by 50 points. The other two sides uh, were Geelong in 89 and 08, and Geelong were, funnily enough, runners up in both of those years. So not only have they demolished some minnows, you know, they beat the Suns by 10 goals, Hawthorne by 10 goals, West Coast by 71 points. I'm an Eagles fan, and I saw close up how damaging this Carlton side is right now. You know, at quarter time of that game, it was 58 plays two, and I know West Coast suck, but the only analogy that I can think of that is appropriate for that, it's kind of like someone doing an epic fart on your exposed chest while you're half asleep. By the time you've sort of woken up and you're ready to sort of fight back, it's too late, the damage is done. Anyway, I don't want to get into my love life right now. We're talking about Carlton, and in that six week stretch, in that six week stretch, they have been first in points for, they've been third in points against, so really strong offensively and defensively. One of the most balanced sides in the competition in that time. And they're also first in contested possessions. We know they're a very strong contested side. A lot of the logic for me picking a rise for Carlton this year was based around the individuals that they've got, particularly in their spine. So Kerno and Mackay, Kerno over the last two years has been the best key forward in the competition. The year before that, Mackay won the Coleman. Weedering is an absolute gun key defender and it's their midfield as much as anything that's the real strength. Cripps is the reigning Brownlow medalist. Like the individual awards from this team is staggering. But even the the entire dynamic of their midfield is strong. The other individuals, Sam Walsh, Adam Chera, Matt Kennedy, Kerno, Hewitt, some genuine contested clearance midfielders there. The other impressive thing, which I think is a really good sign of a team that has a really good system and is starting to play in flow is the fact that they have battled injuries throughout this entire year. And as I record this, this week they're going to be without Chera, Walsh, Mackay, and Kennedy. And, and those guys have missed football in general. I'm really just skimming off the top of their injury list there. Obviously, Walsh missed the first month of the season or something like that. Zach Williams is out for the year. It hasn't been an easy trot for them from an injury point of view. So with that all said, they're currently uh, sixth or seventh on the ladder, I think. Their percentage is 116.5. If I'm not mistaken, that's the third or fourth best percentage in the league right now. Their final four games are 
are against St Kilda, Melbourne, GWS, and then Gold Coast. And to be honest, with the exception of GWS, who I'm about to talk about, I almost want to tip them in all of those games. It is, you know, still early a little bit, and you know, these these hot streaks do end. But I want to know how far can Carlton go this year? Because as far as I'm concerned, they are probably the most likely team to finish fifth right now. And I tell you what, I wouldn't want to be a, even a Melbourne or a Port Adelaide playing Carlton in a semi-final this year. Let me know in the comments, guys, from what you've seen, how far can Carlton go this final series? And then there's the other red hot team of the competition this year. And if you watch that first clip I showed at the start of the video closely, you'll see that I had GWS as the third last team in my ladder prediction, which to be fair, I think that's where they finished last year. And they did lose Toronto and Hopper. But the more and more that GWS keep rolling on this season, they've won seven games in a row. They've won at nine different venues. They've beaten the Demons in that time. They beat the Crows in Adelaide. They beat the Dogs, another probable finals team this year. And obviously a very experienced and mature outfit. They smashed Fremantle. And they also beat the Cats at GMHBA this year. So that resume is starting to really add up for the Giants this season. It's worth noting against the Dogs as well. They were six goals down. So this is a team with some genuine character. And to be honest, I'd extend that to say, this is a club with genuine character. There's no hollow expansion franchise rule argument with these guys. Obviously, they're a stark contrast to the Gold Coast Suns. And yes, probably had a bit more of a leg up, I'm sure. But it's a resilience of a club that has, you know, had its adversity in recent times. Like I think back to 2020, where, you know, Jeremy Cameron and six other players, Zach Williams, Aiden Core, they walked out on the club and then, you know, was it 21 the following season? They won a final against their arch rivals in Sydney. 2022 is a dog shit year for them. Taranto and Hopper walk out of the club. You think that they have every reason to drop down the ladder. They take pick one in Aaron Cadman. And here they are looking, you know, maybe nearly as shit hot as Carlton are right now. I'm really liking that term shit hot right now. I'm in a very informal mood. But my general point here is the Giants are a club with resilience. They've got a good culture, clearly. Things are starting to click under Adam Kingsley and their senior players, you know, the, the quartet of Josh Kelly, Canelio, Whitfield, Tom Green in the midfield. Toby Green is apparently rated the best forward in the game right now. And to be honest, that's kind of fair. Brent Daniels is a very underrated small forward. Sam Taylor down back. Their back line in general is probably the, the least star-studded part of the ground for them. We've seen Harry Hillenberg go back this year with varying success, and they're actually second in the league for rebound 50s. On top of that, Kieran Briggs is actually having a pretty good season as a ruckman this year as well, so showing some clear development. And suddenly, Things look pretty rosy at GWS. Carlton and GWS face each other. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the last game of the year. I think it's the second last game of the year, and that is going to be a very interesting contest. And I'd say these two teams will probably finish fifth and sixth and have home finals just because I think the gap in terms of points and games won is a little bit too much of a bridge for them to cross to actually make the top four. But I'm going to say no team wants to lose in week one in the top four and have to come up against Carlton or GWS right now. There is a bit of time to go. There's a, you know, a pre-finals buy. Form lines will change, but the numbers on these two teams are very, very impressive and it's shaping for a very exciting final series. But let me know in the comments, guys, what do you think? How far can these teams go? Is this a false resurgence from either one of these sides? For me, I think Carlton's got a level of belief and they're playing to a higher level than they have, you know, it's almost the best Carlton outside I've ever seen. It might sound ridiculous, but they haven't finished higher than fifth since I've been starting to watch football. That's one for the Carlton fans to maybe weigh in on. But as always, guys, I look forward to your opinions. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.